to you, Matthew, and good afternoon to you all on the day. The Wembley spotlight falls on two of football's most deserving cases. For the two Rovers, Bristol and Tranmere, the transformation over the past three years has been quite extraordinary. Their respective futures could hardly have been bleaker, really. Tranmere, bottom of Division 4, close to liquidation. And Bristol, dubbed the ragbag Rovers, and no home of their own, with no money to spend, and morale rapidly sinking. What a contrasting story then now. Bristol Rovers still without a ground, it's true, but out on the field, well, they've been a revelation. Third division champions, only five league defeats all this season. And Tranmere have had an outstanding campaign too. Fourth in the table, leading goal scorers in the entire football league. And with every chance of going up by next week's playoff final, also here at Wembley. So here we go then, we can take a look now at the two sides taking part in this final. Here's the Bristol Rovers lineup. In goal is Brian Parkin, who's proved himself the most able successor to Nigel Martin, now of course with Crystal Palace. Four at the back, on the right, Ian Alexander. Jeff Twentyman at 31, the oldest man in the side. And alongside him, outstanding young prospect in Steve Yates. And left back, the Rovers captain, Vaughan Jones. Four in midfield, although David Mayhew is more of a winger, really. And he's got 21 goals this season. The two central midfield players, Ian Holloway and Andy Rees, and out on the left, Phil Purnell. And the two up front, Carl Saunders, one of only two men in the side who actually cost a transfer fee. And alongside him, the towering figure of Devon White, a striker you can rest assured will certainly be putting himself about. Well, now look at the Tranmere Rover side, and their formation is a flexible 5-3-2. Eric Nixon, the former Manchester City man, a most reliable last line of defence for them. Five at the back, but only three outright defenders. On the flanks, young Tony Thomas and Steve Mungle. And they provide extra attacking options. Steve Vickers and Sean Garnett are the markers. Garnett standing in for Dave Higgins, who's suspended. And Mark Hughes is the Tranmere sweeper. The midfield trio, Chris Malkin, very positive, pacey runner on the flank. He's got 24 goals this season. Neil McNabb and Jimmy Harvey, two very experienced players in the midfield. And the two strikers, Jim Steele, a big, aggressive front player, and Ian Muir, who's had a record-breaking season for Tranmere, the number 10. He scored 34 goals in all competitions. So McNabb with the throw. Here's Hughes, intelligent player, looking there for Steele and Malkin, and here's Muir, hits it well, and the goal! Glorious strike by Ian Muir. That's the confidence that scoring 34 goals gives you. And didn't he put that one away superbly then? Half a smile, no more from Johnny King. A long, long way to go yet, but that's a great start. I think this epitomizes uh, Ian Muir. Little ball bowling about, doesn't take any time. He's got very, very good feet, one touch. Keeper may be a bit disappointed he didn't quite make on that one, but uh, an excellent finish from the Tranmere striker. Malkin did well to knock it back into the path of Ian Muir. And that was sweetly tucked away past Brian Barkin. Four goals or something under his belt. Doesn't worry about those when they come out of the air, he just hits them. So, Tranmere have taken the lead. Garnet, he's been very impressive. Didn't know for certain, remember, that he was playing in this game until very late on. Now, Saunders for Bristol Rovers. Vickers is with him. Saunders just kept his balance there. Cross it towards Devon White. It's a second crack and it and scores! Devon White has made it. Gary Francis celebrates. And Bristol Rovers are back on level terms. Devon White. and a very, very good, uh, a nimble finish, really, for such a big man. Harvey, inevitably, will take the free kick. 
with your white shirts in there. That was a good interception then by Yates. So he was caught in possession. Muir, the goal! Muir's got it. No emotion on the face of Johnny King, but his heart will be racing. It's 2-1 to Tranmere. That's tremendous competitive uh, spirit. I think it's from Hughes on the floor there. Once he's gone to Muir, he, can, he does what he can do so well. He can select a right ball. Big Steele's done that so many times in his career, it must have just seemed the most natural thing in the world. But that's the key thing there. And Hughes has won that ball back. Tremendous battling spirit there. Well, Yates had done so well initially, but then he was caught by the sheer determination of Hughes. And Tranmere, well, that's some reply from them. Having allowed Bristol Rovers back into the game with the equaliser, the Leyland Duff Cup is going to be won by Tranmere. Saunders, who hit the post in the second half, and has played so well up front. Full of tricks, full of cunning. But the day, I think, is going to be long for Tranmere. Unless Bristol Rovers can sneak one back here, right at the death. Holloway. Devon White down. Saunders. First time. Denied again by Eric Nixon. What a match he's had. Carl Saunders. And it's all over. Tranmere have done it. Jim Steele with the winning goal. After Bristol Rovers had bounced back so well in the second half. It's the first half of the Wembley double for Tranmere. They have the second part, of course, to come in the final of the third division playoff. And Johnny King, what a moment for him. And there it is, the Leyland Daft trophy to be awarded by Sir Stanley Matthews. And he is in that happy pick time. Here they come, then, the players of Tranmere Rovers, led up the steps by Jimmy Harvey. Bristol City 2. Receiving the welcome from the crowd, the Tramier supporters who travel down from Merseyside and how they're milking the occasion now. So Stanley Matthews presents the Leyland Daft Cup to Jimmy Harvey of Tramier Rovers. Beaming smile for the captain of Tranmere. 